Hallelujah. Give him a big hand of praise one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can take your seat in the presence of the Lord. If you are joining us for the first time, this is Pastor Pascal, Senior Pastor of Allah Bible Church, Seventh of the Lord. It's a blessing for me to be standing before you this morning to share God's word with you. Um, I don't know when you're going to watch this. You're probably going to watch this immediately. Or you're watching this a year later, 10 years later, 50 years later. Whenever you are watching this, it's your time to watch this. This is your time. God has arranged this message just for you. To speak to you. To speak to you. Hallelujah. We've been having a great time praying, trusting the Lord that a lot of us will come to know Jesus Christ this morning. And I've been talking about your John 3.16 experience. It's an experience. You know the verse. I'm going to read it just now. Even if you don't know it verbatim, you might have heard that verse. You might have heard a preacher preach about it. You might have seen it somewhere online. But have you experienced it? Have you had your John 3.16 experience? That's what this service is all about. Because the Bible says the word became flesh. Everything God wrote in his word can materialize in the life of a person. Do you understand? And on this particular Sunday, we've decided to make John 3, 16 come to life for somebody that you will actually not just know the scripture, but experience everything, the spirit of the scripture, everything that Jesus said in that verse should become your experience today. Are you listening to me? So that is what this service is all about. Please, at the end of the service, I'm going to ask you to commit yourself to Jesus. I'm going to ask you to make that decision of your life. To accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. When that time comes, don't be distracted. And don't move from the place where you are until that time comes and passes. Like, until you have given you that opportunity, don't think I'm done. And don't move. Don't do anything until you reach to that moment. When there's a wedding, the bride will come. The arrival of the bride is usually very majestic. majestic. But that's not the most important part of that ceremony. After she stands there and the groom is standing next to her, you know, the preacher will preach. They will say a lot of things. But that's still not the most important part of that ceremony. If you were to move at any moment from there, you would have said you went to a wedding, but you've missed the most important part. Then they ask them to commit to each other. Then this one says, I do, then this one says, that becomes very important now. But that's still not the most important part. Even after they've done all of those things, it's great now. They've gotten married. But we are still waiting for something. Like, it's like we are still left in suspense. Even though they've shared the vows, they've done everything. We are still feeling in our hearts that, you know what, there's something that is not there yet. Do you understand? But when the preacher says, you may now kiss the bride. Do you get it? That particular moment. Because we assume that you've been keeping each other. And that this is your first time to really now experience this thing. So all along, you've even made vows, but now you are experiencing. So we, we are witnessing you experience that moment for the first time. This morning, you're going to hear scriptures. You're going to hear the word. But we want to witness you experience something. And that particular moment is when you're going to say yes to Jesus. So don't let that moment pass you by. I'm going to talk very briefly. As you can see, we don't have a lot of time this morning. Some of you are watching for the first time. Some of you are in the church for the first time today. I don't know where you're going to be watching from. 
maybe you're going to watch after your church service, but it was maybe your first time, or you, you happen to see this face the first time. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm not going to be in front of you for a very long time. <laughs> we're going to make it as short and as quick as possible, but we're going to make sure that you get the message. So the message this morning is, God loves you so much. Yes. God loves you so much. So much. Oh, he loves you. Let's look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. I'm going to add 17 just for emphasis sake. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But... To save the world through him. You see, a time is going to come when God is going to actually condemn the world. Yes. But that is not the time now. Now, God is saving the world. God is currently in one business, and that business is saving the world. God is just reaching out to people. It's like we are exactly in the days of Noah. When God asked Noah to build an ark, and after Noah built an ark, God did not stop people from entering the ark. You must understand that. God did not say nobody will enter this ark. People didn't want to go there. People didn't even believe that what uh, Noah was saying was true. People's eye only opened. When the ark was locked, water level had risen and they were beginning to drown. Then they saw the ark as the only salvation. Not the third or fourth option. The only option. Understand that when God destroyed this world through the flood, there was only one option. For those of us that usually feel that, no, there must be a lot of, a lot of possibilities. There must be other, other ways to, to, to see when God destroyed this world the first time, how many options did he give people? There was only one option. Only one place you could go to get salvation. Only one place you could go to be saved. And that one place was the most despised place because it was being built by somebody that nobody thought he's even a builder in the first place. Yet he had the key. I'm trying to tell you this morning, God is not, at this stage, condemning people. He's saving people. So it is a good time. You are at the right time, at the right place, with the right people, so that you can do the right thing this morning by the grace of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, let's, let's look at our verse. John 3, 6. I'm even, if you, if you see, I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. We are very mad about this verse today. It's our verse. Let's go back now. Let's experience John 3, 16 quickly. Let me show you a few things here that I believe will help you understand why you need to make this decision this morning. The Bible says, God so loved the world. Number one, the verse is introducing you and me to the greatest person that exists. The greatest person that exists in our realms and the realms beyond us, I'm sure you will agree with me, is God. Or do you know of any other person that is greater than God? God says, apart from me, there's nobody else. The Bible says in Genesis, in the beginning, God. In John verse 1, chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. 
the word was God. So, if at the beginning it is God, so there's nothing else. Like there's no greater person because at the beginning is God. So, God is the greatest person that ever lived, that will ever live, that has ever been, and that will ever be. God. Now, it's interesting that this greatest person that has ever lived likes you. In this world, it matters who likes you. It does. It does. Let me tell you the truth. In this world, it matters who likes you. You are in certain places today or you are not in certain places today because some people don't like you. And there are certain places that you can only be tomorrow if somebody likes you. Who likes you matters a lot in this world. People who don't like you, people who hate you don't matter. They've never mattered. Don't worry yourself about such people. Be more concerned about those who like you. When a person likes you, your destiny stands a great chance of being changed because of that person. And here we are told that the greatest person in the whole world today, are you listening to me? That there's nobody that is greater than this person. And he loves you. He loves you. Wow. Wow. He loves you. You, you must be very special. I mean, that the greatest person in the universe has found a liking in you. In your family, you are not even like. Like, a lot of people in your family don't even like you. I'm talking about your, your own siblings. They don't like you. Yeah, they can go for weeks. They don't call you. They don't text you. Okay, when was the last time they sent you a text to say, I actually like you? I'm talking about your family members. When was the last time they did something like that? As you are here saying that, no, 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 this, this love of God, I, I don't need it. I mean, do, do, you, do you know that, that this is great? The fact that God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. God loves you. Right where you are. Nobody likes you in the area. Oh, nobody, not a lot of people even know you. In the family, you can miss certain meetings. Nobody will even notice. <laughs> they will not even notice that you are not there. Yeah. But there's somebody, he knows the number of your hair. He knows... Do you understand? You yourself, you don't know the number of your hair. Like, do you know the number of your hair right now? You don't know. But he knows it. He knows it. He has placed you in the palm of his hand like this. He loves you. He loves you. And this thing stand David. In the book of Psalm 8 verse 4, David says, What is man? You are so mindful of him. I mean, we don't even love ourselves. God loves us. I mean, I'm not surprised that you don't even believe this one that God loves you. It's because you don't even, so, sometimes you don't even love yourself. Mm. You don't even love yourself. So, David couldn't understand how, how come God loves me like that. He said, who am I? Who, 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 who is man? That you are mindful of him. And the son of man, hey, that you will come and visit him. God comes and pays you a visit. Imagine God coming to pay you a visit. This morning, God is paying you a visit. God himself has come to pay you a visit. Who am I? David was even now more stunned. In 2 Samuel 7 verse 18, he says, Then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, who am I? Oh, Lord God, who am I? Ask your neighbor, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? 
Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house? What is my house? You yourself, you know. The name of your family. Who knows it? Who knows the name of your family? Who am I? And what is my house? Like, you, we, we know ourselves. We are nothing. What is my house? That you have brought me this far. You have brought me this far. Who am I? What is my house? <laughs> so I understand that this morning you might not even believe that God loves you. Because, I mean, when you look at your life, there's nothing there that should attract such a person to liking you. I understand. That is the greatest wonder of John 3.16. Is that the greatest person in the universe second thing we learn learning this morning is that this God loves you with the greatest kind of love. So, he's the greatest person and then he loves you with the greatest kind of love. I'm sure you know that there are different types of love. Yeah. Some of you love, you love ice cream. You love your teacher. You love your boyfriend. You love your car. We love different things. So there are different kinds of love. And I'm sure as you are watching me this morning, you've experienced love to some degree or to the other. Maybe you've experienced the love of a mother. In South Africa, a lot of people have experienced the love of a grandmother. Most of the time, children are raised by grandmothers. Unfortunately, because single moms have to go and work. And I'd like to tell you something this morning. The love that God has for you is greater than the love of your grandmother. I thank God that your grandmother loves you or she's still loving you and she took good care of you. I thank God that your father loved you. I thank God that you've experienced some form of love to some degree, but I tell you this morning, it is nothing compared to the love that Jehovah has towards you. That one is a love at a whole new level. The Bible says in John 15 verse 13, greater love has no one than this. Greater love. So there is love, but there is greater love. Greater love. Your, 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 your boyfriend might have loved you but God has brought something that is greater. There is a great... Okay, okay, let's talk about that. Maybe you've had two or three different boyfriends or two or, or, two or three different beloveds in, in, in your journey so far, depending on how busy you've been. You cannot tell me this morning that all of them have loved you the same way. If you look carefully, you will notice that there was one in particular... Jack or Joseph, one of those two people, like the way he loved you, it was, it was, it was some way. I mean, it was, it was better. It was, it was more unique. Do you get it? So we can say that he had a love greater than the other guys, the other one that were there. Do you understand? Now I came to announce to you this morning that the love God has for you is greater than the love of Jack. Jack Toronto, Joseph, Tepo, Tepan, Tepi, all of them. The love that Jesus has for you is greater, greater, greater. Like when, when, when God is done loving you, you, you look at the love of, 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 of Jack. You are even angry. You are angry that this guy, was it love that you are giving me? Was it love? Was it love? Are, are you listening to me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No greater love. God said, there's not, the way I'm loving you, nobody has loved you like that. No greater love. No greater, there's nothing. Apart from the one I'm about to give to you this morning, there's nothing like that. Yeah. I've given my life. 
which Jack has given his life for you before? Even his airtime is a problem to, to even to buy you airtime. It's a problem for him to buy you airtime. For, for a problem for him to a problem for him to give you even his time. What about his life? What are you talking about? We're talking about the life of a person. We are talking about the time of a person. Listen, God is talking to you now. In the book of Ezekiel 16, listen to God talking to you. He says, on the day you were born, no one cared about you. Your umbilical cord was not cut. You were never washed, wrapped with salt, or wrapped in cloth. No one had the slightest interest in you. He's talking to you. No one pitied you or cared for you. On the day you were born, you were unwanted. Damned in a field and left to die. But I came by. God is speaking. He says, I came by and saw you there helplessly kicking about in your own blood. As you lay there, I said, leave. I said what? Leave. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts that in God we live and move. Like, for you, for you to be alive, don't think it's because the doctors were doing a good job. Don't think it's because, no, God said, God said, leave. He found you kicking in your own blood. All of us, when, when we come out of the, 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 the womb, we are all, the blood all over us. We are just there like that, crying, crying. And do you know that from that moment, you could be dead. But God, at that moment, he said, leave. Leave. No greater love. No greater love. From the moment you started, he's been watching. He's been around. Many places you were unwanted. He came, helped you. Yeah, you don't even know him. It didn't matter. I mean, when we are a baby, do you know who is speaking? Do you even know what, when the person leaves? Do you even, can you even hear what he's saying? No, many things that God has done for you, you don't even know that he's doing them. He said you were unwanted. You were unwanted. Hmm? He says you were damned in a field and left to die. Left to die. There are many places you've been damned to. You will damp, you, you get damped in a school. I mean, and, and honestly, you don't know where to start. You are left to die there. You are left to die there. You are damped in a relationship or you are damped out of a relationship, left to die. But it says, but I came by and I saw you there. I saw you. Mm. How many of you can identify? God saw you. He saw you. And this morning, God is seeing you. God is saying, I see you. I see you. And it says you are helplessly kicking in your own blood. You are trying your own things. Eh? How many of us this morning, you are trying this, you are trying that, kicking, kicking, trying to, trying to make it work, trying to, to, to survive. He said, I found you trying, but you are kicking in your own blood. And I said, leave. Wow. Wow. The greatest love. What did I do? Nothing. I just like you. <laughs> I just love you. So I want you to leave. I want you to leave. I want you to leave. Mm. Ah, the greatest person has brought the greatest love for us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've experienced rejection in many ways in my life. There are many places where you will go to and you know people don't like you. People don't want you. It affects you as you, are a ch- as you are growing up as a child. It affects you. Yeah. I 
like when he says, you are unwanted. And maybe some of you are watching this morning, you are, you are actually unwanted, like for real. Like your parents didn't want you. They actually didn't want you. They were not planning for you. They, were not, they, they, they didn't plan with you in mind. If you are here today, it's not because it was their will. God said, leave. In him we live and move and have our being. Number three, God has loved you. The greatest person in the world, that's God. The greatest love, so love. Then that greatest love has been shown to the greatest number of people in the world. The greatest number of people has been shown this love. The verse is telling you that God has a big heart to love the whole world. I don't. If I was to choose who I'm going to love, I don't think I would choose the whole world. A lot of us, you only love people close to you, isn't it? Your father, your mother, your cousin. That's how far we go. What if that is how God loved? You will not be here. Thank God. He loves everybody. <laughs> God loves black people. Even though in many areas in this world, black people are not wanted. It's a clear reality. If God was a, a, another color, and if God was a racist, one of the first group that was going to feel hell will be black people. If God, you, all the black people today, you must be so happy that God is not a racist. That God doesn't love this group and hate this group. The reason I'm saying this is, I'm, it's not, when I look at the society we are living in, the group that is permanently at the lowest rank everywhere is usually black people. Oh, you don't know. It's a reality. It's right there. I'm not giving you foreign information. It's right in front of you every day. So it is to tell you that if it was dependent on other people about going to hell or to heaven, ah, a lot of black people will pay for, for others to... Yo... A lot of exchange was going to happen. Thank God that this great person who has come with this great love, he loves everybody. He loves everybody. He loves women. The next group that was never going to make it far was going to be women. After black people, it was going to be women. Now, if you are a, a black and you are also a woman, there was not going to be bad, very, very bad for you. I tell you. I were not going to survive. I were not going to survive. Thank God that this God loves everybody. He loves all of us. He loves the whole world. He loves the whole world. The greatest number of people. He loves all of us. He loves you. He loves you. As short as you are, as tall as you are, as chubby as you are, as skeleton as you are, he loves you just the way you are. He loves you. Like, you know, here on earth, man, let me tell you something. We all have our preferences. Some of you, you don't like chubby. If you see chubby, you run. You say, no, 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 no. I'm not interested. So if you are God, all the chubbies were going to be roasted. You just roasted them in hell. And some of you don't like skinny. If you come, you look like a mosquito. No, 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 no. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. You know. Imagine if, if it was dependent on you and me. A lot of people would never make it. Never make it. What type of love is this? That no matter who you are, no matter where you are coming from, no matter your past, it has a place for you. You know, that's why people like us have ended up where we are today. 
I mean, it doesn't even make sense that a man like me and a person like you will be where you are today. It's because this love is for everybody. Everybody. No matter what you've done. Maybe you've committed abortion. You don't even remember the number. You might have even killed somebody. God loves every sinner. He loves you. With a big love. In Matthew 5 verse 45, it says, He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. And sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You know, until I, the Lord made me realize that the Bible is not saying he causes the son. His son. The son belongs to God. Like, you see that thing? It's God's property. He, said he causes his son. His son. The, the son is his property. Yeah, it's not just the son that like, it causes the, No, it is his property. So God can decide tomorrow now, son, let's take a break. And then you will see what will happen to us. Because it is his son. It is his son. It is his son. And this morning, he will cause his son, his son, to also rise on the righteous and the unrighteous, the evil and the good. His son, his son, the son of God. The same way he causes his son, he will cause his son. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. Number four, the greatest gift ever. So the greatest person, the greatest love to the greatest number of people and the greatest gift ever. His only begotten son. We are dissecting John 3.16. We are on John 3. I want you to experience it. Hmm? The greatest gift ever. His only begotten son. You know, if you read your Bible, maybe some of you don't know the Bible much. But King David had a son called Absalom. Absalom rose up against his father David and chased him away. Can you believe it? He chased the father. The father ran with the pot belly, running, running. And the son, the son has six packs. The son is following the father with the pot belly. My God. You don't understand. You don't understand. This, yeah. But something interesting. David told the people, don't do anything bad to my son. Hey. Somebody has chased you away. And he wants to kill you. But you are saying, please, don't touch my son. They are deal gently with him. Then when you now hear that they actually they killed him. Because those people didn't listen to David. They killed the guys. You, uh, you make your father run for the pot belly. We'll show you something. And you know what? They killed him four times. They killed him four times. All dangerous sons, you are killed four times. You, don't, you die four times. You die four times. We, we, not, we don't have time for that this morning. But I'm telling you, when David heard that his son was dead, you know what David said? David said, oh, my son Absalom, I wish I could have died in your place. I wish I could die in your place. A person that chased you away, disgraced you, slept with your wives, took everything. You still wish that you will die and he will live. Mm. This is how parents are towards their children. A father will rather die than see his child die. Listen to me. I'm trying to show you that this is an amazing gift because it doesn't happen. Fathers don't give their children. They don't do that. They protect their children. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? 
No, we don't go around dishing our children out for other people to, to, to enjoy them. I mean, even a father that his son was misbehaving, he was even saying that, let me die, let him live. Let him live. That is how we are. Yeah, I would rather, you would rather have the, the sickness come on you than the sickness coming on your child. That is how parents are. But I'm amazed at this one. That he would take, he doesn't have two. That he has to say, okay, you go. At least I have another one. He only has one. He only has one. He only has one. He only has one. One only begotten son. He only has one. And he takes him and sacrifices him for you. What type of gift is this? What type of thing is this? Like, that's all you have. And you are giving it away for people who don't even know you. People who don't even, you don't even know if they will respond well to it. That's why. That's why. I'm telling you right now. As I'm telling you that the love God has for you, my brother, is greater than any love you've ever experienced. You, you might not even understand. But that is what I mean. God didn't give money for you. He has a lot of money. He has gold. But I said the silver is man. The gold is man. God could have taken gold to pay for you and me. He didn't do that. He gave something that is greater than all of those things. The blood of his only son. The greatest gift. The greatest gift. He gave for you. The greatest person. The greatest love. To the greatest amount of people. And the greatest gift. Let's conclude. Number five. The greatest metal. greatest method, which is what? Believe. Whosoever believes in him. The greatest and simplest method to access this thing that God has done for you is that just believe. Are you not happy this morning that God didn't say go and get a PhD? After, after all that I've done for you, I'm giving my son, my only son. This is what I'm putting on the, on the table here. Now, for you to also access it, I'm going to need three PhDs, one in mathematics, one in physics, and one in geography. And then I'm going to need you to be a virgin the whole time. That, hey. Only virgin, because my son didn't have a wife. I want virgins only. You see, all of you this morning, eh? you will be cleared. You will just be cleared like, just like that. Nobody will... Because it's the greatest gift, the greatest love to the greatest amount of people. But how am I going to get it? Maybe that's where the cash is. How are you going to get it? God used the greatest method available. And the simplest one of them all is that you access it simply by believing. Just believe. Just believe. And that's interesting because anybody can believe. Belief is not limited to a group of people. Anybody can believe if you want to believe. He made it accessible to anyone who believes. And God has given you the capacity to believe. And I'm not talking about this man saying, yeah, pastor, I think I also believe in Jesus. You know, you know, let me tell you something. Believing is not just saying, I believe in Jesus. We know your belief by your actions. Yes. Your belief is revealed by your action. You know, you believe that that chair you are sitting this morning can hold you. That's why you are sitting on it. If you had a doubt that that chair can break on you, you will not be sitting comfortably and you are laughing and enjoying the way you are doing right now. No, it's because whenever you have faith in something, you act in a certain way. And I want to show you something this morning. I don't, and don't just say, I believe. That Jesus, I've been believing in Jesus. Some of you, to come to church this morning, we needed to use handcuffs. We, we brought taxis to arrest you. So, I, so that you are here. 
And even as you are sitting there this morning, you are like, you know what? I'm just giving you guys five more minutes. Five more minutes. And I, 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 I have somewhere I have to go. I have somewhere I have to go. You, you should be happy that I'm here. You should be happy that I'm here. Is that belief? Is that belief? That some of you, this is the first time you enter church this whole year. This whole year. This is the first day, today, that you have, in fact, that your head, your feet have entered something called Kerekeng. Today is the first day in the whole year. And for you to even enter, we needed to handcuff you. We needed to have security. You, we, you've entered the church this morning like a big man with bodyguards all around. Because if, if we leave this side, you join a jump, you, you go to run away from this side. If we, like we need to surround you to keep you. That's what is happening this morning. As you are sitting there like that, you are not interested. You are not interested. We are using walkie-talkies to make sure that you are still there. Some people are sending WhatsApps all over the place to ensure that you are still there. Yeah. Is that belief? Is that belief? So it's that you are not, your, your actions are not yet in need. And I'm trusting God that by the time we are done this morning, you will not continue the way you've been doing. No, no, no. You will also open your heart and say, I believe in what this man has done for me. I believe in it. Hallelujah. As we close, number six, the greatest escape. The greatest escape. That whosoever believes in him, shall not perish shall not perish brothers and sisters if you want to know why God loves you so much for two reasons reason number one that you should not perish reason number two that you should have eternal life which I'm going to end with just now but that you should not perish you know you don't understand Right now, right now, as I'm teaching to you right now, as, as we are sitting here, uh, you are sitting where you are sitting, I'm sitting where I'm standing. There are people that are perishing right now. From the moment I started preaching, many have perished already. I know you don't believe it, but it's the truth. God knew that we are only limited to what we are seeing here. And we think this is the real world. This is not the real world. Let me tell you the truth. And the body you have is not the real you. It's a suit God gave you to wear. That's why when you die, that body decomposes itself. It becomes uh, grass. All kinds of things. You mean to tell me that that is you, you have become grass? You are a spirit being. After your body decomposes itself, your spirit goes somewhere. And there are only two places your spirit can go to. One is a place of perishing. And another is the place of celebrating. So you, you need to choose today where your spirit is going to go. I heard the story of a young man who For some reasons, I can't remember how I remember, like, he, he, he died. Oh, no, he was in a hotel room, and then Jesus came to the room. When Jesus came to the room, Jesus says to him, you know what? I want to take you somewhere. So Jesus took him to hell. When he arrived in hell, and some of you have watched the video this morning of hell. You saw how terrifying it is. For those of you that got to watch it. When they arrived there, man, the young man didn't believe something like that existed. Even when it was described, he nev- it was never described even 10% of what it really was. He was shivering. Then Jesus took him as they are moving. He says, Somebody he recognized. That is 
is his best friend. That is not just his best friend. That is his roommate. I said, what are you doing here? You left to go to your mother the other day, and I'm expecting you to come back. What is going on? He said, no, you don't understand. I died on Friday. Since Friday, I've been here. Now, in real life, this guy left his friend. He went to his parents. So this guy doesn't know that he died. He, he doesn't have that information. So Jesus took him in the spirit to hell. And in hell, he finds the guy there. Then the guy now informs him that I died actually last Friday. He said, no, it's not possible. Nobody told me anything. He said, I'm telling you, that's why I'm here. Long and short, Jesus brought the guy back. When Jesus brought the young man back, the young man back is in the, he's back in the room. He is scared to death. Picks his phone. Calls his mother. His own mother. Before he can talk to the mother, the mother says to him, my son, let me tell you something. Do you know that guy, your best friend, that usually stays with you? He said, yes. He said, that guy, there was a terrible car accident on Friday. He's dead. Now, the young man, now, he, he, he could have fainted because now, not only he saw it in the, in, in the spirit and he didn't believe, but when he is now calling his mother, the mother is confirming. Brothers and sisters, you might not believe it today. It will be wrong. Because I'm telling you now, that place is real. And that place is gathering people, people like you, who don't believe that it exists. We don't have time for me to take you to the story of the rich man and Lazarus, but you might have heard that there was a rich man who used to enjoy, have fun, enjoy his life every day, wearing nice clothes, eating nice food, enjoying life, behaving as if there's no God and that everything is ending here. Trying to be on top of his world, having many followers on Facebook, having many likes and views on YouTube, having everything nice, focusing here. But the Bible says there was another man who was not rich, who was very poor. The Bible says one day came, that poor man died. But interestingly, after he died, the Bible says he was received by angels. Angels carried his spirit to God. When you die, as soon as you die, you enter another world. And depending on where you were more focused on when you were alive, you will either see other angels or you will see demons. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. After a while, the rich man also died, the Bible says. And when he died, there was no angel. He was taken down to hell. And he started being tormented and burning in fire. And he started asking for help. Unfortunately, it was too late. We all know people that have died. The question I want to ask you this morning, do you know where you went? Okay, let's forget about them. Let's talk about you. When you die, do you know where you're going to go? Ah, Pastor, I don't, I don't, you know, don't depress me, Pastor. You know, this, this thing, these are things that we, we will see when we get there. We'll see when we get there. Oh, We'll see when we get there. I don't think that is a wise answer. <laughs> it will be too late. Because that same verse says that there is a gulf between this group and this group. That those that are this side cannot go this side. And those that are this side cannot come this side. So once you take a side, it's forever. My dear brothers and sisters, 
God went through all the trouble of sending his son, the greatest gift, to die for you on the cross, so that you should not perish. What is the perishing I'm talking about? That hell fire. That you should not end up in that place. That's why God sent Jesus. Jesus came so that you don't have to go to that place. Jesus came to help you escape from that place. Nobody listening to me this morning or watching me has to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to that place. Because Jesus came with the answer. Jesus came to solve the equation. Jesus came to pay the price. And all you have to do this morning is to believe in him and accept him and say to him, Jesus, I open my heart to you. I accept you. I give you my life. You gave me your life on the cross. I give you my life this morning. And from that moment, he will save your soul. And the last thing, the greatest promise, you will receive eternal life from him. That is what all of us have done. And you are saying, but I don't see those. You don't need to see. There's a lot of things that are going on that you don't see. When coronavirus came, would you see coronavirus? But wasn't coronavirus destroying lives? Just because you don't see something doesn't mean it's not there. It is there. It is there. And this morning, God has sent us with this simple message. God loves you so much. So much that he exchanged, he exchanged his son for you. So much that he was ready to lose his only son to save your soul. As you are watching this morning, you need to make a decision. Are you going to continue living as if you didn't hear what I said? Or are you going to pause this morning and correct your steps? The Bible says if you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. This morning, God has spoken to you through these seven things Jesus has done. All God did through Jesus. The greatest person. The greatest Lord. The greatest number of people, um, the greatest metal, the greatest escape, the greatest promise. What is the promise? God wants you to have eternal life. God wants you to end up with Him in heaven, not with the devil in hell. And that's the purpose of John 3 16. That your soul will be saved. And how do we do that? John. Uh, a, a man by the name of Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and asked him, what can I do to enter heaven? And Jesus says to him, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again. And how do you get born again? Simply by number one, accept that you are a sinner. Number two, Believe that Jesus died on the cross to save you from your sin. Number three, confess him as your personal Lord and Savior. If you do that this morning, you number one, you accept that, look, as I'm here, I'm a sinner. If I die in the condition I am this morning, I'm not, it's not going to be nice for me. Number two, I know there's nothing I can do on my own to save myself. I need to trust Jesus who did it for me. I must believe in Jesus then not just believe it, I must say it with my mouth that I believe in Jesus. I accept Jesus in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. When I do that, my soul will be saved. I want all of us to stand on our feet this morning. Right where you are, I want to ask you a question. With everything that I've said this morning, the greatest love, the greatest escape, the greatest promise, the greatest person. I don't know which one touched you the most. Maybe one touched you more than the other. Whichever one touched you, the message remains the same. God loves you. And what he wants is to see your soul saved. That's all. You didn't 
call you to take money from you. We didn't call you to coerce you into a cult. We call you because we care about your soul. And we believe that if nothing is done about your soul, you'll be destroyed for it. Now, listen to me. At the count of three, I would like to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are saying, Pastor, you know what? What you are saying now is all I need. My life is going on the wrong direction. I want to pray with you. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to save people like you and me. He came for us. He came for us. All you need to do this morning is to raise your right hand at the count of three and I'll pray for you. And the Son of God will enter your heart and everything will change. You will never remain the same person again. So at the count of three, you are saying, Pastor, please, I, I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to end up in hell. You know, as for dying, we're all going to die. That's true. But we're not all going to go in the same place. The same way we all come to life, but we don't end up in the same places in life. That's also, when we all die, we're not going to end up in the same places in death. And in life, there are many places you can end up to, but in death, there are only two places. Either hell or heaven. I will never, I will never lie to you. If there was another place I was going to find out, I can tell you there's nothing else. There's nothing else. There's, not, there's not, only hell or heaven. And this morning, if you are saying yes to Jesus, Father, I want you to come into my heart. Jesus, I need you in my life. I want to pray for you. All you need, just raise your right hand and we're going to pray together. One, two, three, your hand up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, you are already born again, but this morning you want to recommit yourself to Jesus. Maybe you haven't been living right. You are saying, Jesus is taking too long to come. I don't even think he's going to come. Same thing those guys were saying. Ah, Noah, you are wasting your time. There's nothing like that. Until the water started falling. No. Jesus told us, heaven and earth shall pass away. My words shall never pass away. So until every word Jesus said is fulfilled, don't, don't think it was just a word. It's a reality. It's a reality. And this morning, I want to give you that opportunity to correct your steps. As a child of God, maybe you've gone off key. Why don't you just reconnect back? Say, Lord, I've lost my way. I want to come back home. And God will help you. At the count of three, you can raise your hand as well. One, two, three, your hand up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now we're going to pray together. I want you to repeat after me this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Please forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me on the third day you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to save the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. This morning, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name. In the book of life. My name is. Say your name. Pascal. Write that name. In the book of life. Thank you Jesus. My life shall never remain the same. When I leave this world. I will be with you in heaven. But as long as I'm in this world. I will live for you. I will serve you. I will honor you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You Satan, you Satan, from today, I divorce you 
from today, I renounce you. You and I, it's over. It's over. Because of the blood of Jesus, I am safe. I am delivered from your influence. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you pray that prayer, you are born again. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus has come into your life. When you leave this world, you are going to heaven. Welcome to your new life. And I thank God that you had your John 3, 16 experience this morning. The love of God. The love of God. Now you need to join the church. <laughs> you see, that first step you took is not the only step. It's the first step. The next step is join the church. You need to be with believers for you to be a good believer. A good believer cannot stay with unbelievers and be a good believer. No, 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 no. Bad company will corrupt good manners. No matter how good your intentions are this morning. If you leave this place and go and continue with the other groups, they will take you right back. And Satan is using people to take you to hell. The same way God is using people to take you to heaven. So decide the company you want to keep. I'm encouraging you to join the church. Join the classes. We will help you grow. We will help you become a strong Christian. And tomorrow... It will be you inviting others for a John 3, 16 experience. May God bless you. It was great sharing the word of the Lord with you this morning. I hope that it has helped you. I hope that you are empowered and encouraged and helped in your heart. Go and continue serving God and living for him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus this morning one more time. Encourage the people. It's a blessing. There will be, there will be things that will be said to you. If you are watching online, please make sure you type on the comments. I pray that prayer so that we can contact you and be in touch with you. Amen. God bless you greatly. Now we're going to share the grace of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Are you ready to share the grace of the Lord? Next week is our communion service. Next week is a spring break. Uh, um, something, a spring break. Uh, we're entering September with spring break. We're not going to spring break this. We're going to break sin. It's sin break. We are into sin break. Do you get it? So as people are spring breaking, we are sin breaking. So I need you at church. I need you in the house of God to break sin. Hallelujah. And live for God. Hallelujah. Now we're going to share the grace of the Lord and fellowship. Are you ready? One, two, three, let's go. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 2023, my year of soul winning. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I will lead many people to Jesus. I will win souls to the kingdom. So help me. Give the Lord a shout. Happy John 3, 16 Sunday. See you next week. Thank you. Oh